Hey everyone, this is Rick. I want to talk a little bit about removing ink from comic book covers, which is I, I'm far from perfect at it. I luck out sometimes and sometimes I don't. The most common ink that I see is this Sharpie pen ink. And I think it either it has changed or comic book ink has changed or both over the decades because the same methods don't always work for all of the ink. But I have four things I usually go to with, with the Sharpie pen and the more polar stuff generally works better. That we have uh, isopropanol or just regular rubbing alcohol, uh, naphtha, we have the uh, xylene and toluene. And I'll show you what those look like. So first of all, isopropanol is polar. It has this oxygen group that makes it more polar. And I also use uh, naphtha, which looks, it's like, that's sort of like mothballs. It looks like this two hexagon stuck together. Uh, toluene is like a benzene, which is one methyl group sticking off of it. And xylene, and there's three different types of xylene. There's one with the methyl, there's two, it's the same as, looks the same as toluene, it has two methyl groups and one can be adjacent to the top one on the second position over or opposite it. I don't use the long chain stuff like the hexanes and straight chain things because those do tend to take almost all the inks off. The biggest problem I find is getting the Sharpie ink off of other colors because the Sharpie ink can dissolve other colors beneath it, especially reds. You'll see that in, in the video here. Uh, and it's hard to get off of whites. It's hard to get off without oxidizing it with peroxide or something else. So it comes off of, like for example, here's an example of, this is old ink from the early 80s uh, on a Justice League annual in the corner. You can see where I took it off of the blue pretty easily. It stays on the white in this case. Many times the red inks, especially, and I know it's not it's not always the same. Don't don't quote me on the colors because sometimes some colors dissolve in it, and some don't. Will dissolve in the actual sharpie ink themselves. So if you remove the sharpie ink, it just you're you're going to remove that 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 anyway. So the solvent that's in the sharpies will dissolve the ink below it. So you're kind of stuck. It's a dangerous game to remove ink, and I'm not teaching you how to do that here. I'm just going to teach you some explorations and things to understand when you do it. I'll be using this little stencil that I made to put ink on books, which I know it's not the same as removing older ink, but I do have some books with older ink on them. I do sort of at the same time, you can see the comparison. And then I will intentionally put too much solvent in the wrong place and show you how these things can remove other colors as well. And what that, what that looks like, I'll be using an older uh, Donald Duck book or no Mickey Mouse book from the late 60s or early 70s and a 1981 or 82, something like Justice League Annual for an example. So I uh, hope you liked the video. I hope that you can contribute something to the discussion so we can all learn something about this. And I hope uh, I'll see you later. Take care, bye-bye. So just really quickly, I'll show you how I put the ink on the books. There's an upper part of Justice League. You can see where I already removed some ink from that book. Lower part with some mixed colors. And then we'll get lots of colors from this Mickey Mouse too. We're gonna to cross these sort of color streams so we can show the differences in these books. And I'm gonna write which uh, solvents we're gonna remove later. So for this experiment, I laser cut little tiny pieces of paper towel in the shape of these little cutouts so I could put isopropyl or whatever solvent it is. And then so that the, I didn't want the solvent to soak wider then the stains, I don't want it to broaden where the ink is going. So you can imagine if I had a broad piece of paper, I put lots in there, the ink would go as wide as it does high. So I, what I do is I just take little thin strips of the paper towel, and of course it still does it anyway, a little bit, but then I will soak it in solvent and then lay it on those little parts, those little sections you see, those semicircular sections. So this is now naphtha. And that first one was the isopropanol. And you can see what the naphtha is gonna do here. You'll see the different effects of Sharpie ink with these different popular solvents. And then we're gonna go with xylene and then in the bottom left and then toluene on the bottom right. So you can watch how I do that here. So here goes the xylene and you'll see I have, I have some older ink that was already there and that four cross under it. And you can see that turning black pretty much instantly. I'll put a little bit extra solvent. You can see how quickly the ink comes up into that paper towel with pretty well, pretty minimal widening of the ink too, I might suggest. And then we just have this one last corner here 
which is the uh, toluene, the bottom right corner. And we'll place the ink in that corner as well. I have this little soaked section. I'm going to place it on there. And there we go. Let's see what happens here. So then we'll remove these and we'll just pick one solvent to do the rest of our experiments on. It's going to be isopropanol for sure because look, here we go. Even though a lot of ink came up from the, the uh, xylene, it didn't get all of it. We can try to roll a Q-tip and see how much we can get off of there. And you'll see, was, and we wouldn't normally get more aggressive than that, but I'm going to go ahead and rub and just see the ill effects of rubbing. You'll see in a moment. And we'll do the same thing down here with the toluene. See how much the toluene spread. Look at that. It doesn't really spread and then not much came up on the Q-tip. So we really don't want that, right? This is what the most common thing is. And then over here, we have the naphtha, which didn't spread very much, but it made a pretty big mess. It also didn't pick up much of the, the black ink, but for a Sharpie pen on most inks, many, it, the isopropanol is the one that we We'll stick with. I usually have a blend of there certain things, not just pure, but you can see how it did okay, but not great on this. You can see how the Q-tip is picking more of this ink up. So I am getting more of it up, although I'm making quite a mess at the same time. And although I don't like to do it, I'll show you what it looks like when you you rub on these with the effect of rubbing the Q-tip, and it's kind of a mess, honestly. But that is what it looks like in there. There's their position, their relative positions. Here we are intentionally going to add more isopropanol than we should. Like I'm not just dipping it in the little paper towels and laying it on there to see the ill effects of adding too much. So we're demonstrating just goobering lots of isopropanol on a book and we see what happens. So I've just taken my stencil. I've got little paper towels in there and you can see how much black ink is soaked up into these sections of paper towel, that one came up with the stencil but they're they're pretty black if you look at it honestly and there is what that looks like now let's do learn more about doing a paper transfer I think mean, we're just gonna make a huge mess let's see how little came off a little bit came off and if we did this several times with little strips that match that size we probably would get much of this ink up and we'd be actually okay you can see how much is left even though we put those little pieces. We have to do that several times, get them slightly wet, and we would remove a lot of it. But let's just say we were in a hurry and didn't know what we were doing. We just wanted to put a bunch of ink onto some, to do a paper transfer, which is what I hear people tell me they, they do a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some isopropanol solvent to the paper in, indiscriminately in any area where I think the ink is. And then I'm gonna heat press it to about 120 degrees and then we'll see what happens. We'll see what colors transfer, what inks transfer, and which don't. Already, we're getting a lot of the, the black ink already off of there. I'm gonna turn that up to the upper part of this book so I can show you in the, the title where some of the reds will come, and I'll just add a little more ink so we can do it over because there's, there's just a ton here because we just put this on earlier in the same day so we can expect there to be some loss. I'm just gonna go ahead and roll this q-tip over and pick up some of that ink so there's not like a hugely great excess it's a more realistic sort of representative of older ink this way so going to do that and then we will heat transfer it over so now that we've cleaned it up a bit there's a lot less ink there we're going to go ahead and just put some ink on or some solvent on isopropanol put it in the press for low temperature and we're just going to do this for 10 minutes low pressure too and low temperature i think that this is one I, I, we set it for 130 it was uh, preheated to 130 and we're just going to let it cool to ambient in here about 10 minutes and then we're going to remove the book and here's the interesting part you can see all the black and red ink transfer this is what i was trying to get across before you can actually see the x from martian manhunters I guess it's a shirt. I don't know what that thing he wears is. And then all the Justice League of America, you can actually see this transfer up here, the exact letters. And the black, look how much that old black, that part of the four was there from a long time ago. That actually came up. You can see it there really well. And Martian Manhunter suit and all that red, the bottom came right out of this one. 
And on this one, I'm just adding some isopropanol. This is 91% to some strips of paper towel. And I use that instead of paper, it's much more absorbent. And I'm gonna go ahead and place these on these little semicircular sections of the Mickey Mouse book. Now in this case, they're, it's the same solvent, but it's different colors. We're doing a purple, a red, and a sort of a turquoise crossing a little bit of yellow and white at the same time. So we can compare, and here we go. And you'll notice for these experiments, I'm only using isopropanol, so I'm not worried about getting it on my skin. If it was xylene and toluene, I'd be wearing my nitrile gloves if I was gonna intentionally get it on my skin, but I'm not concerned about isopropanol. So basically what I'm doing is just touching this here and these little pieces of paper and soaking them into the ink. And then we're seeing how much of it we can get up with the isopropanol. But more importantly, we're interested in what happens to the colors beneath it when we add the solvent. So we're just gonna do this a little bit at a time and remove some, and then just keep doing that over and over again. I'm gonna save you 40 minutes of watching me do this over and over, and I'm at the final point where I'm just rolling up any residual ink with my Q-tip, and you can see I'm picking up some. This is coming off pretty cleanly from this sort of purple color. As it comes up very poorly from the white and the red, it, it starts taking up the ink with it. Blue is sort of medium. You can see a little bit of loss and a little bit of ink there. Overall, not working out great, but these are some things you can expect if you try similar experiments, which is why I'm showing it. There we go. The red is lifting pretty well. Purple is okay. If I worked on that purple for a while, it'd probably be all gone. Blue is slightly lifting with it. So about the same for those two. So just as a demonstration, we're going to try some color loss tutorials on the top, and then we'll do the, the bottom second. I filled in that yellow Mickey area with a lot of Sharpie, and we put isopropanol in this book in the red, and I'll show you how much ink really comes off of these things if you do a uh, paper transfer with the isopropanol. And you'll be shocked, I think. So here we go. We're gonna remove this top part here, and you'll see that a lot of the black does come up, like it really does in isopropanol, but if there's red around, all this red, and very little of the other colors, the purple, the blue, really aren't lifting, but that red is just, it comes right out. And, you know, it's just, it's awful that way. So you kind of have to be selective in what you're trying to remove, and this book obviously is a disaster. I'm gonna put a bunch of, a dose of material here to two so we can see which colors are coming up the most. And, you know, no surprise, it's going to be the reds. Even, in, you know, it doesn't really matter the age of the book as far as I can tell. The, the reds are going to come up the most. So push this down here and then we'll come back, see what lifts up. Yes, the black. Well, I actually didn't put black down there. I don't think I did put any. But you'll see that the uh, natural blacks in the book will come up. And then the reds do too. Like, look at that. It's just, you can see all the blacks and all the reds from here. It's uh, pretty distinctive. There's no, there's no doubting that at all. So these are some color transfer effects with isopropanol. Now different solvents act differently. You can expect different things, but Sharpie is most soluble in polar solvents like water. And those are the kind of things you can expect when trying to remove it from red. If it's not red, you're actually golden. The other, okay, white, white, you just can't get it off of. But if it's on red or white, it's it's quite a challenge. Yellow is a little bit of a challenge too. And uh, anyway, that's what you can expect. And just again as an example, this was a blend of isopropanol and toluene that I used on this section here. You can see how the black ink came off the blue pretty well. And I used a little cut, cut out paper towel method here, but it just didn't come off the whites really at all. And removed a little bit of the blue, but not we're all bad, but the whites, it just, just wasn't coming off of, and that's to be expected. In this particular case, if those were reds, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have tried at all, honestly. Now I'm looking for tips from any of you that that's, I know this is, you know, not a great dramatic, like how to successfully do stuff uh, video. It's more of a precautionary tale about what to watch out for. And you can get those inks out of the white areas. You just have to be extremely patient. I have other videos showing that. You just get a teeny bit out at a time and you're talking 
little bitty q-tips just pressing and it, it may take you several days and sometimes when you're done with that you have to put a little bit of peroxide in there to whiten it up uh, but you know it, just some notes about what to be cautious for I'm sure I'm positive that many of you have your own techniques for a sharpie pen removal and, and what can be expected uh, or you have comments about uh, what I'm missing here or what I'm doing right or wrong I'd, I'd like to hear about it so anyway I hope you enjoy the video uh, take care and have a good day bye bye